Welcome back to another episode of the Once Your Hill Rewatch here on the Filmaholic channel, and today I'm going to be talking about episode 618, Searching for a Former Clarity. This episode originally aired March 23rd, 2009, was directed by Joe Davola and written by, of course, Mark Schwann, because a lot of big stuff happens in this episode, so of course it's going to be written by him. Um, there are two main things that happen, big storylines that happen in this episode. The first, which is the most important to me, is Dan's heart situation. Now, well, before we get into all of that, I want to say the stuff with Dan in this episode and his performance is incredible. His, his acting is it's top-notch in this episode. I really like a lot of the scenes that he's in. With that being said, um, this isn't... The episode in six, or the episode in season eight, which is my least favorite episode of the series, I'll have to rewatch it. It, it might be, still be considered the stupidest episode. I, it's, it's the stupidest episode, that one in season eight, which it has an, a cringeworthy scene. But the scene with the dog and the heart in this episode is just awful. It's so bad because this season in general is, is pretty good. And like this episode would be good if it wasn't for this. And like, the episode starts, obviously, and Dan's at the hospital. He's waiting to get his new heart. Um, and all of this is... I don't know why he'd be in the ER, first of all, either. A lot of questionable things. Why would Dan be in the ER waiting to get prepped for his heart transplant? He should be somewhere else. Um, why did Lucas and Peyton walk through the ER? They would be at a different spot for her pregnancy. Um, but they're all there for some reason, and we're following the heart from a helicopter to it to be taken to the hospital. And there's this dude with a dog in the ER too. And even the lady working at the ER says she was going to call a veterinarian for the dog. And there's just so many stupid stuff that doesn't make sense. But the most, the dumbest thing about the episode is the guy running with the heart in the cooler runs through the ER, the middle of the ER, because that's where you would bring the, the heart through. Um, and trips over the dog leash and drops the heart onto the hospital floor. When then the dog runs over, grabs the heart, and eats it. Yeah, that was garbage. Like, I cannot believe Mark wrote that and thought it was good. Or that anyone wrote that and thought it was good, and that anyone who read it thought it was good. Um, now, I know they used to, I've heard stuff about him being so controlling and like King Mark or whatever, like not letting input come in. Um, so I guess no one else had a decision on this, but some of produ- one of the producers, Joe Devola directed this episode, and he was a producer. Dude, come on. That's ridiculous. It's, it doesn't fit in with the tone of the series. It's bad. Um, it, it was just awful. But there's so many other things that you could have done. Ambulance could have gotten a crash and the heart's destroyed. The dude could have been running with the heart from the ambulance to the hospital right outside and tripped, and then the dog ate it. That's still stupid, but it's better than the dog being in the fucking ER. Like, um, the dude could have got hit by a car as he was carrying the the heart. I don't know, like, just anything. Like, literally could have made a tornado come and hit the ambulance or something, and it would have been better than what you wrote. It was awful. Um, so, but anyways, Lucas and Peyton see this in front of Dan and Dan, or Lucas even tells Nathan about it later in the episode, and, you know, he's like, I gotta stress, I'm not joking. Awful. The other big thing, so Dan's not getting his heart now. Um, he does get a new beeper in this episode, so, or they reset his or something, but he ends up throwing it away, but we'll talk about that in a second. The other big thing is the movie, The Unkindness and Ravens, based off Lucas's novel, is canceled. Um, Paul's fired and the studio has been shaken up and the movie gets canceled. Luke, uh, Julian tries to save it, doesn't work out. Um, James Vanderbeek's character, Adam Reese, is like, I'm pay or play, right? And he gets the hell out of there. Uh, this is his last episode. Uh, he does have, he does one good thing before he leaves and that's that he actually did shoot something on film the night before so Lucas gets his $300,000 and um, so there's something that comes out of it. But then you know, his character's a creep overall in general awful um and once again this that's something where i'm like as much as i love the show there's certain things that really bug me it's like every time other than julian um every time you write a particular character whether you're dealing with hollywood or new york or the business or any type of thing like that you have to write them in a negative light 
um, to try to scare people, and that's not how it is. There's certainly people like that out there, yes, like, there are definitely people like Adam Reese out there, for sure. But, come on, like, you don't have, every time you have to write an instance like this, you don't have to have it be bad, be negative. So I, d- I didn't like that. Um, so that happened, but obviously, you know, the whole movie situation, like, being canceled, I'm glad it does, because it didn't really make sense for me that that to be turned into a movie. I don't see how all the storylines could have fit. It works much, much better as a show, which they ended up doing in season nine, and we'll get to that. Um, but then we go back to Dan. Uh, well, actually, we go to the fact uh, Lucas and Peyton and Jamie go to the graveyard, um, and they're visiting there, and, and Jamie sees Keith's grave, which starts this infatuation with Keith that Jamie has, and Jamie asks Lucas what happened to him, uh, Jay, Lucas says he was shot, and Jamie says, well, you know, who, sh-, you know, not, he doesn't ask who sh- him who shot him, but he asks, why do people do stuff like that? And Lucas said, ask, you know, ask your grandpa Dan. So then we cut to Dan, who is on the beach. He throws his pager, his reset pager, new pager, whatever, throws it out into the ocean. He's done with it. He's, he gives up. He's not waiting for a new heart. He's over it. He's not getting his hopes up anymore. He's, re- he's walks into the ocean, cussing at God. It's an it's a really good scene, um, one of the best of the season. I th- certainly, definitely in the top ten scene, scenes of the season. It's really good, great performance from Paul too. And he goes out there and he's talking to God and he almost drowns. Um, and the, the the scene which that ends before the commercial break um, even shows no one in the water. So it gives you tries to make you think that he did drown. Um, and I remember. Um, this episode, the teaser for the episode, showed that, and people thought he was gone. Uh, a lot of people, when I went to filming, like I said, the filming was bef- between the, the 17 and 18, a lot of people that I were talking to were worried, especially people that I met. I met one person who was a big fan of Dan, like me, um, and she was from France, and we were talking, to, and we were really worried that he was going to be gone, like he was going to drown in that episode, and that he was going to die. Uh, it wasn't until we find, found out that he was back and we watched him film an episode for the finale that we were like, okay, whatever happens in the next episode, he's still going to be around for the finale. So um, so we have that happen. Um, we also have the stuff with Haley in this episode who has to make her decision on, on teaching. The, the principal wants her to apologize. So does she go and apologize for what she did with Sam, what she believes is right, or does she get fired? Um, which ultimately she makes the decision to not apologize, which is great, and she does lose her job, uh, which th- that arc still continues in the next episode with the, prim- the principal, which is annoying, and we'll talk about it. Um, but she does become more of a prominent figure uh, at Red Bedroom Records from this point on, talking about she wanted to be a producer on Mia's next album, and that happens. Um, we have the stuff with Deb and Skills in this episode, too. Um, Skills makes a comment about having kids at the beginning of the episode, which ultimately leads to the, her, him and Deb breaking up in the episode um, because she doesn't want to have kids, and she says Skills deserves more. Um, so they break up. Then we have the next scene with Dan and Deb where D- Dan comes to get Jamie. He says to say goodbye, uh, and you can just feel that emotion from him just saying that. It really um, just pulls at my heartstrings that moment. Um, and it's a really great moment between Dan and Deb because she does let Jamie go with him, um, and she tells she tells Jamie she's like this is where I say goodbye, um, and in the scene Dan essentially apologizes for what he did in the last episode, blaming her for Keith, and says you know don't hold that guilt, um, it's not your fault, and I just thought that was a really good scene with him, but also in season nine we get him telling her that again. And hammering it in of like, hey, I it was my choice. Don't feel responsible or bad about this. I don't want you to carry this burden with you for your rest of your life. It's it's on me. Um, and I, I just I love. I think that was a really good scene for them, and it needed to happen. Um, and they needed to end on those kind of terms for us to get into when we see them again together in season nine. Um, and then ultimately, that's Deb's last scene. Deb is gone after this. She doesn't come back in season six, and she doesn't come back until season nine, uh, which I do think sucks for her character. She definitely deserved 
another episode in season six where she was like, I'm leaving. Like, I think she should have been in the next episode, 619, at least had a few scenes with Nathan and been like, I'm out, I'm going to wherever, um, instead of just not even showing her leave. Uh, I think that was kind of lame, especially with all the other stuff we have to see with Jack and Sam that I don't care about. Um, but then we, we see Dan and Jamie at the park after that. And Jamie, well, first, just really good scenes where Paul was acting and saying how he wished he could be there and watch Jamie grow up. And he's not going to be able to do that. Um, and Jamie asked him, would he ever lie to him? He said, of course not. And then Jamie asked, who killed Key? And Dan, he has to tell him. And he tells him the truth, that he killed him. Um, and then Jamie wants to go home. He gets up and walks walks away and wants to go home. And, and, and that's their last scene together um, this season until we they see each other again in season seven, which thankfully they're okay and their relationship is better. But um, that's just such a heartbreaking scene for both of them. For Jamie as a kid to find that out about his grandfather, but also for, you know, Dan, that's all he had left. And once that moment happened, he doesn't have anything else to live for. Like, it's all gone, you know? Um, but then we go into, after that, uh, Brooke and Julian, that stuff, where they pretty much, it seems like they break up, but they're, they have, he's a, come, he comes back in another episode, so their goodbyes aren't official yet. He, he tries again in the next episode. Um, and then there's also the scene with Dan and Lucas and Nathan, when they're on together on the river court and Dan comes up and says that he failed both of them, but that they are good brothers and to never let the world change that. And I think that was a great scene. Um, cause you just feel all that you feel the whole show in that moment with him talking to them about the world and him and his Keith's relationship. And that's hammered in again in the next scene, the final scene of the episode, which is, is beautiful. Um, another one of my favorite scenes and that is with, um, Haley and Jamie and Jamie is showing her, the Sims characters that he's created on his computer. And then the last ones that he shows her, well, she, she recognizes it's Dan. And then she says, who is this? And it's the guy sitting beside Dan in the hospital. Cause Jamie said, Dan got his heart. Uh, and, and Jamie says, that's Keith. Uh, he's still alive and him and grandpa still love each other. And it's just, <sighs> yeah. Teary, teary eye. That, that was, that's a great scene. Um, but yeah, that's six eighteen searching for a form of clarity. Uh, we're almost to the end of season six, guys, uh, and season six finale is incredible, so I'm, I'm excited to talk about that. But uh, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys next time.